Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining into today's program spotlight session to learn more about the Department of Geography, Geomatics, and Environment. My name is Alicia Singh. I am a recruitment officer here at the University of Toronto, Mississauga. And today I am joined by my lovely colleagues, Professor Havelka, who's gonna be giving us a presentation on what you can expect to get out of the department and what you can expect to do with your degree here. I'm also gonna be joined behind the scenes with my colleagues, Sabrina, Cindy, Sandra, and Lewis, who are gonna be answering any questions you folks may have. So throughout the presentation, feel free to drop them in the QA section below. After Professor Havelka's presentation, I am going to be joined by current students Amar, Sydney, and Jason, who are going to be giving us a little bit more information about their student life experiences, what it was like studying within this department, and more about research opportunities and so forth. But before we get started, I would love to start off with a land acknowledgement. We wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. And now, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to you, Professor Havelka. Okay, thank you very much for that lovely introduction, Alicia. So, um, so we're going to start off with our presentation here, and we've entitled it, uh, What Can GGE Do For Me? So by GGE, we mean uh, the Department of Geography, Geomatics, and Environment. So if you're not familiar with all, well, you should know at least two of those words, geomatics might not be as familiar for, to you. But uh, we sort of thinking that at this point in your careers, you're probably thinking as you're embarking on university, well, what am I going to get out of this program? What's it going to do for me? So that's what our point is today, is to talk a little bit about what you can what you can expect when you're here and what you will hopefully take away from it. And so I'm not the best person to talk to about that. I can introduce the programs, but we've got our wonderful student panel who are going to be here to tell you about what it's like to actually be a student in this department. So within our department, we have with our, you know, three barreled name, we actually have more than three types of programs here within geography. We've got human geography and physical geography. Geomatics actually contains a lot like around GIS and remote sensing. And within the environment, we've also got, um, uh, we've got environmental management. So that's on the social science side, as well as environmental science. So I'm just going to, hopefully this works, I probably should have tried this out, see if this works, and I think I might have to uh, make sure that the, that the sound is enabled. Hang on, I'm going to go to my screen sharing, stop sharing for a second, and I'm just going to, I'm not sure if you can. Downtown Toronto and the Lake Ontario. Sorry, I'm just going to back this up for just a second and start. Can you guys hear it? Are you hearing it? University of Toronto, Mississauga is uniquely situated in the green space of Credit River Valley and is only a short commute to downtown Toronto and Lake Ontario. Our programs are designed to give students the interdisciplinary training they need to address the most pressing social and environmental issues. Students enrolled in our program can specialize in one of four disciplines, physical geography, human geography, the environment, as well as geographic information science. Physical geography is really all about understanding the natural world and the physical processes that link these systems together, especially in understanding how these systems may change in the future. Key to the physical geography discipline is the pedagogy of experiential learning and getting outside to understand these physical processes with a hands-on learning environment. The Human Geography Program at UTM is a carefully designed curriculum that covers community-related issues to transportation, to health geography, all the way to globalization issues. Human geographers are employed in all aspects of society. So you see them in economic development offices, planning offices, you see them in health policy. The Environment Program is an interdisciplinary program aiming to educate students in a variety of different science and management and social science skills and practices to help them address some of those big issues that we're dealing with today. So the climate change, the plastic waste, that interdisciplinary nature is really in demand right now and an understanding of how the environment connects to business decisions, to government decisions, and to scientific and research and learning is sort of where we are seeing the workforce go. GIS stands for Geographic Information Science. 
And this is a suite of tools that allows us to analyze spatial data. We see our students getting really strong placements. They're working in government, they're working in industry. They have lots of unique jobs from crime analysis to working for conservation areas to working with satellites doing remote sensing. The biggest perk of studying at this specific campus is you can eat lunch outside at the picnic tables, go for walks along the hiking trails, and you can do your courses out in the woods too, which is a huge plus. As a student driven by experiences, the field courses were the best experiences that I've had in my program. I felt that it was so amazing to see the world from above and be able to derive data from satellite images. I took ENV 100, which is a first year environment course, and fell in love with it. The discussions we had in that class, I felt like were really important to everything that's happening in the world right now. There are all of these natural things going on that you walk by every day, and now I actually critically think about them, and they're kind of incorporated into my decisions. I got a lot of face time with the professors that I worked with, which isn't something you necessarily get at other universities. I felt like I got to know my professors more like on a personal level, instead of me just being a number for them. Geography doesn't get a lot of visibility in high school, that's definitely true. And then I entered university and I ended up taking environmental management and geography and sort of found that I had stumbled across this wonderful topic. This fundamental concept of how space impacts everything in our lives. I work at Stanta Consulting as a consultant for transit agencies. We provide all transit related services for transit agencies all across North America, including the TTC, YRT, and Winnipeg Transit. We have some of the world's top researchers, and these top researchers bring what they learn into the classroom and teach it to the students directly. The students of today are really want to be a part of the solution, and they want to have the ability to go out and make a difference when they graduate, and that's really encouraging as a faculty member. To find out more information, visit our website or check out any of our social media channels. All right, so now I'm just going to go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, can you guys uh, can you guys see that? You can see my my PowerPoint now. Okay, great. All right, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about, I mean, that was uh, probably a, a, a good uh, overview, I think, but I'm just going to talk a little bit more about the different kinds of programs within a sort of under the GGE umbrella. And so um, as uh, Professor Couillere that you saw on the video was talking about that he said that human geography gives you a lot of the skills that are really desired by, um, by the workforce these days. And so because really what you end up developing is your ability to, to be a problem solver and so on. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that get studied in human geography. We have clusters of expertise in the following four areas. So there's a cluster of health geographers. So they work on things like global migration, indigenous health, health geographies in sub-Saharan Africa in particular. Then there's a cluster of urban and population geographers. So we have expertise on transportation, urban planning, development of populations. There's social and political geography. So things related to globalization, indigeneity, gender, human rights, and so on. And then there's kind of this economic and resource geography cluster as well, which covers things like energy, water, food, industry, retail, finance, global markets, and so on. And so what you might be thinking is, doesn't that kind of cover everything that there is to know about the world? And it sort of does. I mean, this is what we would like you to, when we think about what can GGE do for me, is the idea that geography is about having a mindset where play Place matters and place is something we need to take into consideration as we approach these problems. So you're developing a whole suite of skills that you can apply to a lot of different things. So for example, many people come to university with an interest in human health. And you know, they might think medical school is the only way that they can approach that interest in human health. But you know, the best way to train and in public health or in epidemiology is to have this understanding of sort of health geographies. That's a really fundamental core of being able to be successful in that discipline.
So then if we think about some of our programs in physical geography, um, I'm just going to emphasize mostly the kinds of things that we do outside, because I think for a lot of students, particularly at the end of this COVID year where we're so sick of being on Zoom, that the idea of actually being able to get out in the field and do things, well, we're sort of hoping that, and we've actually been pretty successful at keeping this up during COVID. So we've even had field studies going on even in this crazy year. So um, some of the things that we do are things like climate studies. We do, um, this is dental chronology, which is using tree rings to understand climate change. There's, um, uh, there's a fields course that covers things like soil science, and you can see a whole bunch of people doing various kinds of uh, soil sampling here. And we have quite a cluster of expertise in water science, in hydrology. And um, actually, I'm going to be one of the students on the panel that's going to be meeting with us, uh, that's going to be talking a little bit later on, is going to be doing a research project with me in, the, in, in sort of a, a water science kind of field. We also have a bunch of people who are doing work in the Arctic. And so snow and ice studies is a big part of it. So if you like being out in the cold, here's your, there's, you'll certainly have a lot of opportunities to do that here. So we also have a lot of expertise in our, in our geographic information science. So as Professor Adams on the video was talking about geographic information science, this has applications all around to the, well, I should say around the world, but certainly to a whole bunch of different disciplines. So, and there's a lot of things that are included in this. So when you think of some of the applications of GIS as things like managing natural resources or emergency responses, disease control, conservation, transportation, retail geography, um, uh, real estate. I mean, there, it's almost impossible to think of a place where we aren't interested in spatial patterns. And so remote sensing, geographic information science, are those are a set of skills that you could use in almost any kind of discipline. And so then this is a little near and dear to my heart because I'm the director of the programs in environment. So, uh, so as I say, we have two major kind of prongs within environment. You can go in the social science uh, route, which is towards environmental management, or you can work in environmental science. So again, environmental science does tend to overlap with some of the things that we've already talked about, things like hydrology, soil science. Uh, there's uh, um, you know, there's the opportunity to do some research. Again, one of the other students here is going to be doing a project on coyotes and urban environments. Uh, um, and so, you know, we have the opportunity to, to do those, those kinds of things about the natural world. Um, we have a lot of opportunities for field courses. You're looking at a bunch of students from, um, from our program who are at uh, Mount Chimborazo in Ecuador and on a field trip that we went on. It was pretty amazing. And we also have a, a bunch of minor programs. So for people who in particular, if you're thinking that I'd kind of like to combine this with something else, I'm interested in, you know, let's say I'm interested in political science, or I'm interested in economics, or I'm interested in management or something. Is there, can I just have a little taste of this? We offer several minor programs. So for example, we have a minor program in environmental law and policy that has really um, I gotten a lot of interest lately. As I say, we have several um, professors, Laurel Besco, who you saw in the video, is an expert in environmental uh, law and policy. And so she's one of the anchors of this, of this program as well. We have another um, uh, minor in sustainability. That's a pretty hot topic these days as well. We also are moving towards having a sustainability certificate, which is going to be a co-curricular certificate that you can, even if you're in other programs, that you can sort of add on. But we'd like you to be in our programs. And so I just wanted to show you a couple of these pictures of, as I say, these are just taken from various field courses. You know, learning out in the field is one of the best ways to learn about things. So we have uh, in the, the Galapagos, this is from the Amazon, this is from the Andes, and this is from Churchill, Manitoba. So these were all field courses that, that I was involved with, but there's many, many different field courses that are offered by, by different people. And not all of them are focused in being out in the wild. We have field courses that run in urban areas. There's a field course that goes to Montreal. There's field courses that are doing urban studies in Toronto. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways of imagining what we mean by a field experience as well. And again, I just wanted to show you some of the other things that uh, um, that 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 we've worked on here. I particularly I like including this one because as this is from a course that I teach um, that uh, we do a huge group project. 
where everybody in the class works on for an outside client. So we had a client at uh, um, our, uh, Oxford County, they had a decommissioned landfill and they asked us to write a restoration plan for this decommissioned landfill. And that was what the semester project was for everybody for the 25 people in that class. We worked on this big report and uh, submitted it to them and they were really, really pleased with, they said, you know, whatever, we would be happy if we had paid for a consultant to do this. So, you know, so there's an all, a lot of opportunities to get sort of that, you know, intersection with, uh, with, with the workplace and so on. And this is something we're really proud of. So we'd really like to kind of, uh, um, you know, sort of put it out there is that UTM is one has one of the few accredited environment programs by our national accrediting body. So there's really only a handful of universities who have this accreditation now and UTM is one of them. UT St. George doesn't have it yet. So we are accredited by Eco Canada which means that graduates of our programs are already considered they will receive an EPT designation, which is Environmental Professional in Training designation. So not only can you put BA or BSC after your name, you can also put EPT if you are a graduate of one of our programs. And there's a lot that comes with that, not just three letters that you get to put behind your name. You also have access to job boards, to funding for your first jobs. They will help to subsidize. They provide wage subsidies for your first jobs and so on. So it's, uh, um, it's really something that we're extraordinarily proud of that, we, that, our, that our programs have this accreditation. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say. I thought I would like to leave a lot of room for our students to talk because they're probably the more interesting ones to talk to. And so, but I did just want to leave you with this thought. What can GGE do for me? What we can do is we can provide you with a strong interdisciplinary grounding in many of the top skills that our employers are looking for today. So we really hope that you will come and see what GGE can do for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Havelka. So we did get a few questions I would love to ask uh, you live, and that is- Great, um, okay. First one is, how you mentioned a lot of opportunities in which students can be out in the field. So I'd love to know, what is your, what would you say would be the divide between how much they're actually gonna be in the lab versus how much they're gonna be in class when they take these courses? Oh, it really varies. So it's really hard to give a, a blanket. It's a really good question. So I, I don't want to make it sound like, do they ever go inside or are they just outside wearing rubber boots all the time? So no, that's just, it's an example of some of the experiential opportunities. So what you'll find is that every course you're going to take is going to be, you will get a range. So there'll be some courses that will be uh, sort of, you know, like whatever. And again, we're moving to this model where some of our courses are going to be online and so on. So sometimes we have just like tutorials, discussions, seminars. So sometimes your course is going to be structured around mostly just sort of you know readings and tutorials meeting with your professor meeting with teaching assistants and so on working in peer groups and then there will be opportunities to work in the lab so you know you would have lectures and then there would be like a lab section and then there would be a course that sometimes for example a lot of my courses there might be um, some lab experiences or sorry uh, some some field experiences but other days we would be actually having a tutorial or a seminar so you're not out every week you're out a couple of times uh, um, a week uh, or sorry a couple of times in the in the semester and that tends to be I, I don't do the snow and ice stuff that, that's not my ball of wax so you know but of course if you're studying snow and ice you'd be out there so sometimes we have week-long field courses um, sometimes we have, and some of them are very, you know, and so, well, the Ecuador course, that was actually a five week course that you can get a full credit for. So that's a really long winded way of saying that there is a huge range. And so if it's not your cup of tea to be out in the field, you absolutely don't have to be. But if it is something that you would enjoy and you think you would have as a good learning experience, there's a lot of opportunities to do so. So I hope that's answering your question. That sounds amazing. It definitely seems like there's a lot of options for everyone to really choose what suits them. The last question I have for you is that what can students expect to get expect their first year to look like? Would they expect to have these type of courses in their first year? Or is this something that happens in their upper year studies? So the sort of the experiential courses that does tend to happen in the in, in upper year courses first year is kind of just it's, it's where you're getting a taste of everything you're learning some vocabulary you're getting introduced to a lot of different ideas. Um, first years I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to the students to talk about first year because they're uh, I did first year but a long time ago, so <laughs> they're in a much better position to talk about the first year experience but uh, but yeah first year first year is interesting because you really like it's like this huge buffet, but it's mostly going to be 
be kind of, you know, sort of like on, on a lecture base. These tend to be more experiences that you get, uh, you get in upper year courses. However, um, I don't know if it was, we weren't able to do it this year, but in the first year geography course, there were field trips up until this year. We just weren't able to run that during the COVID year. So even in, you know, even in your first year in geography, you will do at least one field trip. Perfect. Thank you so much for your information. My pleasure. All right, so now I'm going to be handing it over to the student panelists to come on board. Um, so today I'm going to be joined by Jason, Amar, and Sydney. So if you all would like to just take a moment to introduce yourselves, so what program areas you're studying, uh, what year you're in, um, and then we can go from there. So we'll start off with you, Jason. Yep, sure. Hello, everyone. So my name is Jason, and I'm taking a double major in environmental management as well as psychology, and I'm also in minoring in biology as well. I just finished my third year, so I'm going to my fourth year now. Welcome. Now, how about you, Amar? Hi, everyone. My name is Amar, and I'm a third year student entering my fourth year, and I'm doing a double major in biology for health science and environmental science. Perfect. And how about you, Cindy? Hello, folks. My name is Sydney. I'm also just finishing my third year, going into fourth year. I am doing a major in environmental science and a double minor in bio and sustainability. Welcome everyone. So again, if you guys have any questions you would love for the students to answer live, feel free to drop it in the QA box below. But the first thing off the bat is that all of you guys are doing so many different areas of study. So that's really, really interesting to see how well this works as a hybrid with so many different areas of discipline. The first thing I would love to ask all of you is why did you choose to dis to study geography, geomatics, and environment. So we'll do it in reverse order. We'll start off with you, Sydney. Yeah, for sure. So I actually came into UTM wanting to do a biology specialist, and I quickly realized that was not for me. There wasn't enough variety in just doing biology. Um, so then I switched over to an environmental science specialist, and still I found that I was too much of one thing. So the great thing about GGE is that I could have my sustainability minor and also go into another department completely with the biology minor. So for me, it was basically just being able to have a hand in every cookie jar, you know, and experience as much as I could. Definitely relatable. I felt the same thing when I was an undergrad. I think that's the best way to experience it. How about you, Omar? Um, kind of similar to Sydney, when I came in, I was in life sciences and I was basically more focused on doing mainly bio and chemistry and all those things. But in first year, I realized chemistry was not for me. And when I took EMV, um, EM Environment 100, I just knew like it was something that I could pull like knowledge from every other place I've learned. And it just made sense to me. And also, I didn't want to put like everything in one by doing like a bio specialist or an EMV specialist. So I decided to even weigh them and do like both majors. Sounds good. And how about you, Jason? Well, to be honest, I'm more or less the same as well. Um, when I first come in here in first year, I have so little idea of what I will actually, I actually want to do or I actually am interested in. Um, but after taking first year environment and the environment course and first year psychology course, um, I sort of find my way through them and I find myself interested in them. So I go on and take the programs and take more up, upper year courses and I find that that's, that's the areas I like. This all just helps to prove the point and expand on what Professor Havelka mentioned is that first year is just an experimental year. This is where you're trying out so many different things. You guys have all shown that you guys have switched programs, gone between different um, areas that really to see what works for you. And I think one of the core reasons for that really helps to contribute that is the different experiences that help to shape you into understanding what did you want to study? And so I know Amar and Sydney, you guys are both delving into the research opportunity. So I'd love for both of you to discuss what are the research opportunities you're going to be going into and how did you even find out and get started with them? So we'll start off with you, Amar. Um, so the research projects I'm going into is the behavior and impact of coyotes in the, in the urban environments. So how I found it, I went on the ROP app and I was just looking through, like I wasn't looking for anything specific. I was just looking to, to, find, to find something like I had interest in. 
And first of all, I actually wanted to do an EMV um, ROP, but like things there, I was like, um, okay. But when I looked under bio ROPs, I found this one and I just found that it was kind of an integration of both interests, both biology and environment. So I was like, this is perfect. Then I applied to it. That's very exciting. And when do you start your opportunity? Um, we have our first meeting tomorrow. Exciting. Yeah, and it runs for the whole summer. Awesome. And how about you, Sydney? Yeah, so really similar to Amara, actually, I, in first year, I was looking at the ROPs like, oh my God, like, I can't wait to do this. I know this professor's name. This is going to be amazing. But you know, in your first year, there are a few people ahead of you who are probably going to get that opportunity. Uh, but I kept looking every year. And then this year, I was looking at the ROPs. And same thing as Amar, I was looking at the ENV ones. And I was like, okay, these are, they're okay. Not exactly my research interest. But then actually an ROP with Professor Havelka, who's in our GGE department, and Professor Richter, who's in our biology department, came up. And it's bioaquatic monitoring, and it's happening at the Credit River, just outside of campus. And it kind of combined both of those interests for me. And it was just love at first sight from there. That's very exciting. So I guess that's one way that students are able to get involved from the mm -hmm. academic perspective with the department. And now, Jason, I know you got involved with the department on a more student life perspective by getting involved with SAGE. Do you want to elaborate more on that? Yeah, for sure. So SAGE stands for the Student Association for Geography and Environment. So it is the um, academic association for the GE department. So we really do uh, a range of things. We have on the more academic side, we have um, uh, panel discussions or seminars with uh, students and the department. So we kind of are the connect uh, liaison connection between the department and students in the, uh, in the ENV and geography programs. And on the more um, campus life social side, we have like a bunch of events um, documentary showing, um, social events that we welcome students from the department to join. So, well, actually, Sydney was our executive as well, and he's, she's one of the incoming uh, president as well. So, do you have any words on that? Yeah, I think you nailed it. Um, I think the best part about SAGE is that it is that academic association, but we also cater to the social side of things. Everything that Jason mentioned, we have panel discussions, documentaries, but we also have those socials and just more fun things on the side. Um, it's a really great way if you get involved just to find out what's happening in the department and also, again, academic opportunities if that's up your alley. One question we get asked all the time is how do students get involved, get to know their peers and get to know their professors. So you all three have shown different ways in which you can do it, either getting involved with research, getting involved with student experiences. But I would love to know a little bit more on how did you really get involved with going to professor office hours? That tends to be something that students are a little bit scared of going into into their first year. I know I had I was a little afraid at first and I had to bring a friend along with me. So you guys want to share a little bit more about your experiences so we can start off with you, Sydney. Yeah, for sure. So in my first year, I was terrified. I looked at these people and I was like, these are professional academics. I just came from grade 12. Like I do not belong here. Um, so I did the same thing. I brought a friend with me and we waddled in and we were like, hi, is this office hours? But um, what I found with the GGE professors is that they're all super nice. They're really welcoming. Uh, I took EMV 100 online in my first year. So I didn't go to a ton of office hours, but when I did, it was actually Professor Velka and Professor Barbara Merck, who I love Professor Merck. She's just the sweetest person ever. So going to talk to her just felt like you were talking to a friend. Like there was no judgment and it was super easy to just have that conversation and not feel intimidated. You heard it here, folks. They're re they're super, super friendly. I feel like we all have like this idea in our head that professors are so hard to speak to, but trust me, once you break that layer, it's super easy to speak to them. How about you, Omar and Jason? Well, it's the same for me as well. Um, first year, I was terrified, but after having gone to a few office hours, especially for the ENG courses, I realized that professors are not like core horrifying human beings that sits in the office always but they're actually like as Sydney said they are they're so friendly you can you can like discuss with them beyond academic as well um, I had like 
like program choices and stuff uh, discussed with them as well. So they are really a really good source of support besides um, other resources we have on campus. Uh, when I was in my first year, I didn't really go to office hours, like usually, but I used to go to facilitated study groups and I feel like they really worked for me. Like it was a very comfortable environment and you got to learn with other people as well as people like that were students just recently and people that are even still students like right now. And when I got to my upper years, that was when I started going to office hours. Um, profs are so nice. Like that's the best place you can get clarification from. I totally agree with you. I feel like there's so many resources out there to really help our students thrive. You mentioned the facilitated study group. Um, there's office hours, your TAs, even your peer students, everyone here is ready to help you. Now, Jason, we were discussing how to how you got involved, um, but I also know that you got to know your professor on a different scale, on an international basis. Do you want to talk a little bit more about your course and going to Ecuador? Yeah, for sure. So uh, right after my first year, I joined a summer abroad course, uh, which is actually the course uh, Professor Felka mentioned in her presentation, a course um, which we actually traveled to Ecuador. Uh, for a month, for a month, and then we studied ecology and conservation there. So that was really a unique experience because uh, imagining traveling with your peers and your professors to a new place for a month—that that's not a small thing. And we also went to a lot of um, very pristine and well places you really won't go on your own. We went to the Andes Mountain, we went to the Amazon forest, we went to the uh, Galapagos Islands. So though, uh, well, when we were in there, we actually did like field trips and we did like small scale research there. So that was really learning in the field and that was a wonderful experience for me. That sounds amazing. I really wish I took that course when I was an undergrad. You're making me regret it now. So what would you say would be your biggest like learning curve, like your biggest memory or your best learning lesson through that course? Well, there are a lot actually, but uh, one thing I would say, it's actually um, reflecting on yourself because throughout the journey, you're traveling um, with many people that you haven't met before. Um, you're in a new place, you're learning while you're uh, staying there, interacting with locals. Um, I would say like, it's not about learning the, 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 the hard knowledge there, but also reflecting on how those knowledge and experience connect with, with your academic career and also with your life, because you really can't feel that when you're in the lecture hall or just doing it, reading books um, on those knowledge. So, so I, would, I would say that's, that's, that, that actually, um, that is what I felt the most. That's an excellent takeaway. And I think that's something that you can definitely experience throughout all the different experiential opportunities that are offered. It's more than just the academics. It's about really trying to build yourself as a wholesome individual, building upon your analytical skills, your quantitative skills, qualitative, and so forth. So that brings me to the next question, which is through all of these experiences, what would you say was the biggest skill or I guess the biggest takeaway out of studying GGE? And we'll start off with you, Sydney, Amar, and then Jason. Hmm. For me, I want to say like collaboration and teamwork. Um, I've always been someone who's involved in a lot of different groups, whether that's sports teams or like student unions. And I think a huge thing when you come to university is you realize that for the rest of your life, especially if you're going into like a science field, you're going to be reliant on other people and you're going to need to learn how to work well with each other and trust each other. And so, I mean, even just this year alone, I had a ton of group projects and lots of my different classes. And I think that's essential. And I think the GGE department does a great job of preparing you to work with other people and to have fun while you do it too, because you know nobody likes to be in the group project where no one's working together. Very relatable. How about you, Omar? Um, I would say definitely communication skills and also like time management skills, because most of the time I have to juggle between like my two majors. Sometimes the 
like the differences are major so i can't even say oh this that this intersects with this or like i have to do everything on its own time so i have to make time for everything as well as my own personal life so you have to know how to manage your time properly for sure and jason yeah well i actually want to echo amar's point because especially in the gge programs uh, there are a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can actually choose or study. So throughout my journeys, although I'm just like just entering fourth year, I have to make a lot of choices on what courses I want to take or what research opportunities or what experience I want to um, be engaged in. So um, that process actually requires active reflection and evaluation on myself and all the resources I have. But that that's also... Uh, where you can train yourself to see what what you actually like and what you're actually uh, comp uh, competent in doing. And that is also helpful in like choosing your area of study and also choosing your career and so on. So off the bat, all of you have listed so many different skills. I don't think anyone has really said the same skill. So it's amazing to see that from communication to collaboration, time, time management, um, team building, you guys were able to develop yourselves in so many different ways that are inside the classroom and outside of the classroom, and that these can definitely be taken on into the workforce after you, after you graduate and so forth. And now I know all three of you are in going into your final year of university. So I'd love to hear what are your plans after graduation what do you want to do? So Amar, do you want to hit start things off first? Yeah, sure. Um, after graduation, I plan on working for at least a year before I go into like master's school. And I plan to do a master's on, in public health. So I just hope because I couldn't plan. But right now, like I have an open mind that like, if I find like interest in any other thing, like I think I would also follow that. What better year to study public health than this year, right? How about you, Jason? Oh, well, yeah, that that's actually a good question for myself because I really have no idea what I'm gonna I want what I want to do after my graduation. I obviously like the environment, but I also like biology, especially evolutionary biology. I'm also I'm so into psychology, especially some specific topics. So for me, um well, first off, I have to figure that out, um, but most probably some further education, um, probably down the research field as well. But I guess um, I'll have to use my remaining year here um, using resources in the university to figure that out as well. Well, hey, there is no shame in not knowing right now. I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I took a fifth year. So there's definitely so much room to really just explore and see what works for you. How about you, Sydney? I would have to say I'm definitely a combination of both what Amar and Jason said. Um, you come into university being like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. And here I am four years later saying, mom, I still don't know what I want to do with my life. But um, I am planning on doing a master's after school. Probably will take a year off just to get some work experience. But I actually am looking into the UTM master's program, uh, the master's in sustainability science. So looking forward to maybe coming back to UTM. That's very exciting. I love that to see that you're wanting to continue your education right on campus itself. So that has a question that I would love to ask all of you is, why did you choose to study at the University of Toronto, Mississauga? What brought you to this campus? So Jason, do you want to take things off first? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, U of T is definitely one of the best school in Canada and the world. Um, I was fortunate enough to get accepted. Um, then I also have friends studying here at UTM, and they all had really great comment on the on the like atmosphere here, and also the campus itself. We have really great environment there. We have a patch of forest. We have deep, and all of that combined, and we have uh, one of the best uh, ENP programs there. So that was the program I was accepted into. So. Um, there was my decision, uh, I came to UTM. I definitely think the ranking plays a huge factor. It's always great to know that you're getting taught by world-renowned professors who 
who have definitely been in research. And I bet you there's been opportunities where you've definitely, I know I've experienced it. I'm sure you guys all must have had that up, that moment where you're you're given a rating and you're like, hey, wait, that's my professor that I'm citing in this in this essay. My professor did this research. So I always think that's a really exciting moment. How about you, Omar? Um, I came to UTM because of like the ranking worldwide, like the prestige. And also because this campus is smaller in comparison to other ones, like I feel there's a stronger sense of community. Like you get to see people more often, you get to talk to people more, you can meet up with your profs, you can meet with your friends. Yeah, I just feel it's like, as, um, as Jason said, like it's a good atmosphere for learning. I definitely think that community is a huge asset. You guys have all shown it through the different ways you've done it, whether it's student life, academic, um, residence, which I'm definitely gonna ask you about really soon, Amar. Um, and Sydney, how about you? What was your reason to join UTM? To be completely honest, I had never planned on going to U of T, let alone UTM. I actually only visited for the first time when I was looking for soccer scholarships. Uh, and the UTM team reached out to me. And when I came to campus, I looked at my mom and I was like, I love this place. This is the one. Um, I think for me, definitely what Amar said, the FaceTime with professors is huge. Because if you are to go to St. George, which is a beautiful campus, don't get me wrong, there's so many people. It's downtown Toronto. Like you're bound to just be a face in a crowd, right? But at UTM, I feel like I've actually been able to develop relationships with my professors. And I feel like everyone in my class was always super friendly and ready to help me out if I needed it. Um, I also am someone who really enjoys just being out in nature. And we literally have a hiking trail like 10 feet away from campus, which is just awesome. Yes, the hiking trail, I think we hear all the time through emails and phone calls and people always ask us, is it true that you actually have deer on campus? Like some people have never seen a deer before and they don't believe it. And yes, they definitely are. Um, so I know Amar, you live on residence right now, but you also lived on residence throughout your undergrad. Do you want to share a little bit more on how did residence really help your undergraduate experience? Um, okay, so when I was in first year, I actually didn't live on residence because I couldn't get into residence. So in comparison to that experience, to when I started living on residence in second year and third year, I would say it's more convenient. It's like your biggest issue is going to be getting out of bed and actually going to class. It's not getting out of bed, getting on the bus and then to class. Like it's more straightforward. And I feel like, especially in your first year, it's a good environment. You get to make friends, you get to be more focused, I guess, in a sense, because you're less worried about the outside and how you're going to make it here, and you just go to classes and be on your way. So I think um, living in res residence is definitely a plus, and if you have the opportunity, you should definitely do it. Yeah, I wish I lived on residence when I was in undergrad. There's been a lot of missed classes because I just kept snoozing my alarm. So that's definitely a big bonus to it. So I know that we're getting close towards the end of our presentation. So I have one last question that I would love to ask all of you. And that is, what advice would you give to someone who's coming into UTM for their very first time, for their first year? Uh, what would you wish you would have known when you were coming in? So Jason, do you want to start things off? Yeah, for sure. I guess... One advice is don't stress out because often, oftentimes when you come to university, you think you have to decide on everything. You have to decide on what you want to study. You have to decide on what you want to do as a career. But no, that's not the case. For me. Like just me, myself as an example, I have no idea what I want to do even now. But um, there are tons of resources on campus you can uh, to help you figure that out. And you yourself have a lot of time and opportunity for that. Uh, as you learn, as you take courses and you experience things on campus and throughout your university life, uh, those can actually inform yourself and help you to make those decisions. I think that there's just so many resources that we just never ever thought about using in our first year. And so you mentioning not to stress out. I feel like in first year, that's like the automatic thing. We all are, so we don't know what to stress out about. So we're stressing about everything. But I think it's once you start to figure out what resources are there to help you out, things go a lot more smoother sailing. How about you, Omar? What would you give your first year self? Um, the advice I'll give to my first year self is definitely not to take on more than I can handle. Because 
over stressing yourself like putting too much weight on yourself you just get to be less efficient in what you're doing like now you can't be good at anything like because you're really just struggling i feel like find what you want to do and be able to balance it out you don't have to take everything at once like you don't have to do every single thing at once that's my problem the first year i wanted to take everything i wanted to do every single thing and it doesn't work that way and also i would I would have wanted myself to be more open to using the resources in school, like going to the office of registrar to ask for help, um, guidance in my planning. I was really doing everything by myself. And I'm actually happy in my upper years, I found out <laughs> I could actually go to them and use them more frequently. And it really helped me. If I could echo your message of not trying to do everything all at once on a microphone, I 100% would do it on maximum volume because there's so much room for you to really just try things out throughout the year, throughout the years. There's multiple years. You don't ever have to shove everything all into first year. Now, Sydney, last but not least, what would you give yourself? I think I would probably say to be open to new experiences, even if it's something you never imagined yourself even being interested in, but also to stay true to yourself while you do that. Um, like Amar said, I am definitely the kind of person who likes to bite off more than I can chew. Uh, and so I've done a lot of different things while I've been on campus, but I feel like once you get to know people, once you get to know the campus and you spend a little time you definitely find your niche. And I think once you find that niche, it's important to kind of capitalize on it. You know, get yourself in there, talk to people, talk to professors, do whatever you can because four years goes so quickly. Like I really don't know where it went and I'm happy that I've had the chance to try a little bit of everything. I agree with your message wholeheartedly. We get a lot of students who always tell us, I know so-and-so did X, Y, Z, so-and-so did X, Y, Z. How do I do it all? And you're just sitting there like, it's okay. You don't need to do what everyone else is doing. Don't look at everyone else as kind of your competition. Figure out what works for you. And then you can definitely get, figure out your groove, like you mentioned. Now, Professor Havelka, I would love to ask you as well, what would you give as an advice to students coming into their first year? I don't know. I've got three incredibly wise students that I'm thinking, how can you be so smart? I don't know. I didn't figure this out until just recently. So you guys are really, really smart. So honestly, a lot of really what, what we're hearing here is don't is is in savor it. Four years goes by so fast. And it really is your opportunity to just explore, find out about yourself, find out about what it is that 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 uh, that turns you on. I am um, I, I, I won't take too much time here, but my own journey, I did my undergrad, I was a molecular geneticist. That was what I did my undergrad in. And I put off taking an ecology course until my last semester of my last year, because everyone told me that it was a terrible course and I took it and I loved it. And it was, it was a new professor. And so, I was just so turned on by it. And then I went off and I worked for a while. I was worked, I worked in a lab. I was a, uh, a research assistant in molecular biology. And I thought, you know what? I like this, but I don't love it. I want to do ecology. And so I, I applied to graduate school and I was really nervous because I had no ecology background. And I showed up and they said, oh, well, you're gonna have to read all this, you know? And so it was fine, but I got up. And, uh, and then when, of course, you know, when my friends needed some help with molecular biology, I was able to help them out. But sort of the, the moral of the story is that you will find your path simply by being open, as Sydney says, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Don't stress yourself out and don't worry if you don't know exactly what it is. The point is you want to have as many experiences as you can and you know learn from your peers. And I'm so glad to hear that you guys said that 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 we're not actually scary. Years ago we actually shot a video of um student of, of uh, props sitting in their offices at office hours being really sad because nobody's coming to visit us, you know, and, and it would be like talking to puppets and so on so that we can talk to students. I always tell students that uh, if you come to office hours, the only thing you have to be scared of is that you'll be saying, um, I have to go to class and be like backing out of the door as I'm going, no, but wait, I want to talk to you about this. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's so please don't be, we're, we, we love the best part of the job, honestly, is connecting with you guys, really. That's the the best part for us is getting to meet wonderful people like Ama and Jason and Sydney, you know, and so that's, that's really what, uh, what, what makes us happy. So please reach out, ask, show your enthusiasm. And, and as I say, four years will go by really fast. 
Thank you so much. So this concludes the end of our presentation. I wanna thank everyone so much for your time, for asking your questions and being a part of learning more of what this department has to offer. So with that being said, I hope you have a good evening, morning or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And hopefully we'll be able to see you very soon on campus. Bye everyone. Bye.